Welcome, residents, to the Dr. DC Podcast. My name is producer Richard, and next to me is the doctor himself. Hello. Today we are joined by uh, a Twitter guy. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to find a way to describe him, and then yeah. I decided Twitter guy is the... Solid Twitter fo- follow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Pro-level shit poster. Uh, Al- <laughs> Alex Jaffe <laughs> alumni. Hey, Alex Jaffe alumnus. Yeah. <laughs> That's an honor, That's yeah. It's David Watkins. Hi. Hey, welcome. How's it going? Thank you for <laughs> thank you for joining us. For people unfamiliar, yeah. David runs what I believe is now Green Hornet posting uh, over. Oh, on I Twitter. changed it around a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah used but, to be an anti-feminist <laughs> Twitter account, but <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> it was uh, it was Charlton posting and it was Question posting that's before right. that. Which that's there's your Jaffe connection right there, mm-hmm. David. Oh, yeah. uh, I always ask the guests what first got them into comics. But I think with you, I want to ask what first got you into Charlton and the question, because it's a very particular niche of characters that we're going to be talking about. Very particular set of comics. Yeah, it's very particular. Yeah. um, Like a lot of people, I I got it. I watched Justice League Unlimited and I saw um, those episodes with the question and I was just like immediately like hooked on that character. I wanted to know more about him and i went into the comics and i'm like wow all this is completely different <laughs> and every single iteration and it was like and then i just kind of dug deeper and then as i was getting into like memeing and shit posting on twitter and facebook or whatever i've uh started reading up more on the characters like when uh, james gunn announced the suicide squad movie and you saw those uh, images of uh John Cena with the Peacemaker right. outfit. I was like, that is so cool. I actually want to read about this guy. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> His totally. comics are insane, so that's great. Yeah, nice. I mean, of as you as you were digging in, was there other than the question, let's say, because I think the question is, you know, the question of Blue Beetle are probably like the two biggest characters that have come out of of Charlton. Other than those, is there a character that you've really, really latched on to? Is there one that like you feel close to and you're like, I wish people knew this weird, obscure character? Uh, Captain Adam at this point. Definitely him. Right. Yeah, I absolutely love that guy. What What is it about Captain Adam that uh, that you like? Um, just how, uh, just how human the guy gets within his own comics. Like I started reading those and like, some of them are about, oh, wow, he has God powers now and oh, he can, uh, you know, uh, make jet fighters turn into feathers or whatever. But like a lot of it, uh, especially in the eighties was actually more of a military drama where like, you know, he's forced into becoming this character, this, uh, superhero and have a fake public persona, uh, by like, uh, this horribly corrupt section of the government. And it's, uh, it's really fascinating how he tries to like, balance his new feelings for his sense of duty and everything like that and it it goes a really long time like 50 issues and it's like it's great yeah that's awesome we did we did a captain Adam episode i listened to it (laughs) a couple of years ago now is it no yeah oh no we just talked about him a lot recently but i think he's come up Yeah, Yeah, yeah 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 But yeah, uh, I remember you guys did the Captain Adam episode, and then it was kind of funny. Like in in, in the Captain Adam, Adam the Captain Adam episode, that you you admitted that you'd rather read about Firestorm, or at least somebody did. <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right. That sounds right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy because I, I mean, I don't know if I said it on that episode or not, but I agree that the thing I like about Captain Adam is the weird like military angle yeah. of it all. Like mm-hmm. there's some there's something interesting there, and then, but everyone's just like eh, I don't know. Oh, uh, you know what it is? It's we up. talked about him a bunch in the Adam episode. That's why. And I think we talked about him a bunch because we just did uh, transmutation. Powers. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he he comes up. Absolutely. Yeah. For, yeah. yeah. I know. I'm like when he said Captain Adam I was like Captain Adam comes up all the time, oh, and I was oh, like, look at look at you. You know <laughs> you you fucking nerd. Oh you. no. I was like, no, 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 like trying to be a more obscure character than that. Nope. Absolutely. Oh, there are. We're going to talk about this Hell today. yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's a few. There's a few for sure. Can't wait for it. All right. Well, we got a bunch of those questions, so why don't we jump into them? Sure, let's do it. 
All right, first place we're going over to Facebook. Going to the face in the book. Going to the Facebook. First question comes from Wario Core. Uh, I'm going to ask a question. Oh, I was going to say, I'm going to. Oh, Wario Core. Yeah, yeah. Better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yours was also with. Mine was there too. Yeah. Uh, why do you personally think DC hardly uses any of these characters anymore? As the resident Charlton expert, what what do you, what do you think? Yeah. Um. You know, I've I've thought about this quite a bit, and uh, I think it's because when when uh, when DC purchased the Charlton action line, and they basically gift wrapped it for Dick Giordano, who was the editor for the original Charlton characters and stuff. Um, they went at it with an attitude of uh like the, we're gonna this is at this point where what's the 80s we're kind of veering away from the stoic like you know you, you you always picture the justice league you see that alex ross painting of all the justice league members standing tall and proud yeah. and they, they, they got all their shit together they figured it out they're the heroes they're the modern myths and everything like that yeah the charlton characters none of them were like that like the question Dennis O'Neill immediately said, oh, yeah, I'm going to kill him in the first issue and have him reevaluate his entire life. Um, yeah, Peacemaker, yeah. he is a nut job, like crazy nationalist gunman who goes, flies around in a jetpack and murders people. Um, yep. uh, his, uh, uh, Blue Beetle, uh, as soon as he joined the Justice League, he uh, became buddy pals with uh, Booster Gold and got a lot less serious. You know, they, they, they all like veered away from like the super serious stoic dc um you know the, the modern myth thing and like modern dc has kind of gone back to their roots a bit with like you know the, the constant crises and like the oh the, all this all this lore really matters and stuff and like the charlton uh, the bulk of it uh must be like a trying to fit a triangle in a circle hole or something for right. them because it's like it doesn't really meld well with their uh like current like you know dc lore i guess yeah which which is which is funny because i mean like again obviously there's characters they don't know what to do with but most of those charlton action heroes have gotten some do at some point even like fucking nightshade it's but you know shadow pact is a cool book with mm -hmm. nightshade in it and nightshade gets like her do i mean there was some suicide squad stuff and and things like oh that. yeah and that was great too i think shadow pact is really where nightshade gets to be like a real character captain adam was obviously like around a lot and they gave him different things to to try and some stuck and some uh uh didn't the question is obviously got like a real cult following and is an increasingly popular character and you know the cartoon goes a long way with that Blue Beetle is obviously a fan favorite, and that's why Killing You, but Countdown to Infinite Crisis was such a big like. <laughs> these characters have had moments; they get their opportunities, and yet <laughs> it's very space. It's very spaced out. Although I will say, Blue Beetle, they DC's always been hot for Blue Beetle. Like, yeah. they've, like if it's not Ten Core, they immediately like throw in Jaime Reyes. They're always want to promote that guy, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, it's kind of crazy that we're getting a Blue Beetle movie, like. Totally. That's awesome, <laughs> but awesome, you yeah, know. Yeah. But you're, you're, but you're right. It feels of all of the characters that are still like DC proper, like it, it feels like it wouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. Well, with that, let's go to the next question from Casey Rowan, who asks: Should DC reboot LAW? Okay, <laughs> LAW was like a short series that was like a team up of the Charlton characters, I believe. Oh yeah, this is a, this is a whole mess. So, uh, Living Assault Weapons was a six issue mini that was originally proposed by B Bob Layton and Dick Giordano, who drew the whole thing. And their whole idea for it originally was going to be that it took place in the Charlton continuity. It's going to be like a epilogue to that whole thing. Right. But DC at the time was like, um, no, it's either Elseworlds or it's in our our universe, and we're going to make it make it in our universe. So they forced a bunch of editorial changes so that, um, oh yeah, we're going to throw Batman and Plastic Man and all this stuff in, right. and uh, the pe like we're 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 chucking Christopher Smith out altogether. There's a new peacemaker. We're going back to the objectivist question, even though he's been characterized to be long past that point at this stage. Like actually, right. it got it got to such a mess. That I, I only learned this a few years ago. Uh, Bob Layton and Dick Giordano offered to buy this back from DC before they published it, but DC refused and published it anyway. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah. I mean, isn't that just classic DC, though? Yep. 
that's really yeah that's wild especially because you go like well um, uh, if it's not set in the charlton continuity if you're not doing a, a like whatever happened to the man of tomorrow but with charlton if you're not doing that then yeah why would you why would you go back to the original kind of like version of the question why would you like why would you set it up that way or why would you make them do that or yeah it, it's a, it was a mess <laughs> so should they reboot it um I mean, yeah. mm. <laughs> um uh honestly like uh if they do i would call it something different <laughs> and, um and What's i would probably <laughs> Uh, well, I, I mean, I guess it's okay. I, mean, like, I, don't, I don't know. It's it's all right. Uh, um, we find too, out that David's pro cop. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I want. Do you do you think do you think that like do you think it would be a benefit or like a hindrance to the Charlton characters to like make them a team you know like some of them have gotten to you know tango with the justice league or with the suicide squad or whatever and they kind of come and go do you think like it would be a benefit to have something like law or like what were they uh what were they called back at the end of charlton the sentinels uh, of sentinels justice? of justice you know something like yeah. that like do you, would you want them to be a team do you think that would help um one-off team-ups would be certainly interesting. I mean, DC has done a few of those even before that, but uh, uh, I, I, I just think it would be super weird to try and include to include Question and Peacemaker on the same team, especially right. with like the, like how the public perceives both those characters right now. Totally. Like, uh, like you know, like what like you said, one one is totally pro law and the other is not, <laughs> and, and it's uh, yeah, it, it'd, it'd be kind of weird. But I will say, like uh, the idea of um, mashing these action figures together for like four or six issues is really like intriguing and that's a cool idea like hell do it like a the, the idea of law was pretty cool like they said oh yeah we're, we're some super weird uh, villain shows up and traps the Justice League in some parallel dimension and it's up to just the Charlton characters to figure out the mess <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was weird in execution but it's a solid idea and maybe do that again but maybe do it with like Jaime Reyes, Blue Beetle, Rene Montoya question, maybe some some of the more right. recent Charlton legacy people. That'd be right, interesting. Right, right. Yeah, that's a cool idea. I, I like that. I, I Yeah, so to answer the question, we're firmly anti-law. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but pro team up. All Charltons are bastards. Uh, all right, let's leave Facebook and head on over to Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. First question comes from our favorite religious representative. Oh, Chris Chan. That's right. Chris Chan asks... Would the Charlton characters be better had they been created or, or, organically within the DC universe as opposed to bolted on as a result of a takeover? How would you introduce them into the DC organically? I have a take on this, and I'm, I'm curious if, if you, you share this one. I, I don't think there is a more organic introduction for the Charlton characters than Crisis which is when they do it. Oh, they fold, that was a pretty natural thing. They fold them in in crisis. So you meet, you know, Ted Cord and you, you see uh, uh, Earth 4, yeah. you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And, and then it gets uh, folded into the continuity at the end. And so then you're just dropped in a new continuity where they've, quote, always been there. Like, I, yep. I, I don't know what more organic thing, like, it's not like there wasn't a crisis and then they showed up and then you had to be like, oh, we have an 80 year secret history. Yes. They like, they, they, just, they were they, always there. They, just move the camera over. You know, like, they, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, Fast and Furious stuff. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, like, they just, they just started the continuity over with all of them. To me, that makes total sense. I'd be curious what you think of that. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I completely agree with you on, on that front, especially in terms of like, yeah, the crisis, especially like I, when I first read the crisis, it happened, it was like so natural. I didn't really know the history of any of it. So I was, so I just kind of assumed Ted Cord and Captain M and all of them were already in DC. That was right. how I kind of, yeah, that was how, how naturally well it was done. Same with Captain Marvel and all of them. Uh, in, I'm also, I'm just like really fascinated and intrigued by the history of Charlton before DC purchased them too. Like that's all a really bunch of 
really fascinating stuff and that dc uses their advantage like uh, in the captain adam book i mentioned uh, part of um captain adam's fake public persona is that all the stuff that happens in the charleston uh comics is faked like it's like a public like fake public dossier like right. oh what happened in uh space adventures 33 uh, that's just a, a government deep fake, you know. Yeah, it's, it's all so like fascinating false flag to me. operations. Yeah, yeah, that's such a cool take on that to still keep it relevant too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it is. It is kind of funny that way. I mean, there's there's some weird continuity stuff where, like, I think some um, like for Nightshade, her Charlton adventures with Captain Adam like actually happened with king faraday like that's a yeah i remember that origin issue yeah there, which is sort of like a similar kind of retcon to like what happened when um like wonder woman was for a bit post-crisis not a founding member of the justice league and they had to retcon like early justice league adventures to be black canary not wonder woman oh as like oh, yeah been there so it's kind of similar there. So, I mean, in that way, they actually weren't treating the Charlton characters different from their own. So, like, if that is not if that doesn't meet the definition of, like, organically working them in, I'm not sure what does. Yeah, well, yeah I no, guess. It's, 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 yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say the only other option really is, is like, it, it, you would have to have written them in originally, which... Or you just go, we're not going to try to retcon anything. Yeah, yeah. Their histories don't exist. We're starting them over. Sure, yeah. And then you just have your ongoing continuity. And then all of a sudden, Ted Cord is there. Sure, yeah. And it's yeah, not, yeah. you know, you're not trying to fit in all of his Charlton adventures as something. Or you're not trying to fit in Captain Adam's adventures as false flags or whatever. <laughs> you're just saying, this character never existed until now. And this is them moving forward. Yeah. Yeah, Captain or Adam. you do an analog character uh, and just say, oh, yeah, no, this is someone completely different, but they have the exact same mannerisms and they existed in, like, Gotham or whatever. You know? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> All right, mm -hmm. let's go to the next question. Let's do it. From Truth, Justice, and Hope, who asks, I know a little bit about at least the post-crisis versions of most of the Charlton heroes, except for Thunderbolt. What's his deal? Oh, Thunderbolt's a weird one because... Mm -hmm. he's supposed to be a different character and then the they couldn't get the rights or something and so they made a ripoff basically <laughs> um yeah so this is interesting uh thunderbolt uh was the lone charlton action hero who was who was solely owned by his creator pete right. morrissey right. uh and uh dc got the license to him for like a limited time and they actually i, I actually read this shortly before our call the first issue of that thunderbolt run um and the, and like they you know he does, does the thing he interacts with the green lantern and he does all this stuff but then then uh morrissey scooped the rights back up as soon as they were done and uh yeah he's uh since then he's been published by uh dynamite who's had the license and there's some really interesting stuff that goes on there that has some its own commentary on the charlton characters Oh, yeah, and it's really fascinating. Yeah. Uh, if I recall correctly, the Thunderbolt had the ability of mind over matter. Like he could, like, yes. he could like positive vibes his way out of things. Oh, I like that. He, he could heal. He could heal bullet wounds just by thinking about like not being hurt by the bullet wounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He could do mm. that. Shit. He like studied with monks or some shit like that, and he like yep. that was his ability was to be like so optimistic that things turned good. Yeah, he he, he can will himself to do like a, a sixteen feet cartwheel to kick somebody in the face as he's getting shot. It was so amazing. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, he I, charmed his way through. Like he life. had like a half and half costume, like half blue, half yeah. red. Yeah, he could he could absolutely charm yep. his way out. It, like he could probably Jedi mind trick by just believing in his own charisma. So his thing is oh yeah, Riz. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And really, and in, in terms of personality, he's pretty like pretty close to uh, Ozymandias, the guy Alan Moore based. You know, uh, like sure, he, like yeah. he is like the he's like the oh well uh, except the, a little bit of a different thing is like oh yeah I am smarter and better than everyone else but I don't want anything to do with anyone else usually he has to be tugged and forced his way into the Thunderbolt costume to help. Are you talking, you're talking about Just Reed? Really... <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I'm I'm famous for my power of positive thinking. Yeah, I know it's the other parts <laughs> I was talking about. 
<laughs> uh, all right, let's go to the next question. All right, from Fakia, who asks, Ooh. "Oh, I thought you said Fakia. Oh, like, Fakia. Oh, Fakia, bro. Oh, Fakia, bro. <laughs> Fakia, bro. No, it's Fakia and Fakia. <laughs> yeah, Fakia. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Did you see that Pedro Pascal uh, bit from SNL? That oh yeah, <laughs> uh, but why am I? <laughs> <laughs> and now uh asks what's up with sarge Steele? who is that guy and what was his deal in charlton real stump of a question oh, two there. in a row yeah uh, <laughs> yeah sarge Steele, the man with a steel hand take it away yep. All right. Yeah, no. Uh, again, re- before our call, I kind of refreshed myself by reading the first issue of Charlton Sarge Steel, drawn by Dick Giordano. And uh, his whole thing back in Charlton was he was a private investigator right. who uh, helped with various cases, some just murder mysteries, other, oh, a Nazi wants to blow up the world or something. And um, uh, he, uh, in, he got his hand got blown up by, by uh, trying to get a grenade away from uh, – you know, from innocent civilians in Vietnam, and he replaced it with like a hand of solid steel. Yeah. And w- when DC uh, took him in, they uh, kind of made him like a Nick Fury light, and they uh, an upgraded the hand, I guess. <laughs> that it's... No, 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 not like that. <laughs> the original Nick Fury was white. That, that, that's not what he. No, 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 oh, 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 no, 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 not like that. No, more Jesus. like uh, you know how you like Nick Fury, but yeah. what? <laughs> oh no, what? <laughs> that's the Marvel what if? Yeah. What if Nick Fury? Oh was... no! <laughs> Jesus. I remember when we did the Captain the roast of Captain America up here and oh, I was yeah. white Nick Fury. Yeah. And I had to be like, the original. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean he he uh ends up being like he's implicated when like Luthor is president. He's like part of the government. I think he was like mm-hmm. Waller's boss for a bit. Like he was like a step yeah. above her in like Task Force X and like the Suicide Squad or whatever. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm towards sure the end of the at. Suicide Squad run. Yeah, I'm not sorry, sure towards the end of the Suicide Squad run, he was like, uh, he was like basically the guy that Waller just constantly had to argue with. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure where he's at now, but I do know that he was in that he was in that OMAC book in New Fifty Two, like right at the launch. He was in the OMAC book. Uh, it's a really weird thing. Max Lord was in there too, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Uh, yeah, yeah, Sarge Steel's sort of in a weird position because, like, he's. I think the tough thing with Sarge Steel is that he's also occupying the position that a, a bunch of other DC characters also kind of occupy, which is like vague, like black ops government kind of person, like King Fair. Yeah, head honcho. Yeah. Yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. Or even like Director Bones or something like that. Like, there's like uh, there's a I bunch of characters Bones. like that that are sort of like vaguely like they're not like elected officials, but they kind of work in the shadowy corners of government. Oh, name mm-hmm. one DC group that does that. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. You know? So I think Sarge Steele has actually probably gotten, even though he's arguably made more appearances than other Charlton characters, I actually think he has it worse because it's he's unoriginal. Well, he's unoriginal. I think that's a problem. You know. Yeah, if they went like, well, a pretty interesting thing was, uh, um, he he was made pretty interesting in Pax Americana, but he was still the evil government man. But he was actually yeah. more of a villain in that, which is kind of a fascinating take. Uh, I think either do that or maybe go back into the uh, private detective angle because at least there he has more room to have his own character and be like, oh, I'm solving the case. See, you know. Yeah, to- totally. I mean, you read Pax Americana. Yeah, yeah. You liked that one. That's all these characters. Yeah. The yeah. funny thing about that one is it's these characters yes. that inspired Watchmen, but that then now done through the lens of Watchmen. Yes. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Uh, Morrison's notes on that are crazy. They go cra- go like the, the the fact that uh, their version of the question doesn't see things in black and white, but like through a multicolor spectrum. And their whole reasoning was that an objective. That was a book that I hated colors. and then grew to love. Yeah, that was right. You read it and hated it, and then slowly over time, you were like, 
fuck, I love this book. By by explaining <laughs> to <laughs> other people why I hated it, I started to love it. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, like, wait a minute. Yeah, that was the thing. Was that like I tried? I, I I you were just like, did you not get it? And I'm like, no, I got it. And I like fully explained the whole thing. And you're like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I guess I like it. I don't know. <laughs> It was kind of crazy because, like, uh, I was the opposite experience. I was like, oh, man, I love this so much. And then, like, just last year, I was telling my friend about it who just read it for the first time for, like, an essay. And, and they were telling me, oh, yeah, isn't it so crazy how the Ozymandias stand-in was the president? I'm like, wait, what, what the fuck are you saying? What? <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Yeah, crazy. All right, next question comes from Alex John Lucky, who asks, do you foresee any use of Nightshade anytime soon in D.C.? So Nightshade. I wish is a character who i think originally yeah, first tell what's the deal with him and then... well see i i'm i'm gonna I'll, i'm gonna pass this over in a sec because sure. i always fuck this up in dc her thing is that her mom is from the land of nightshades and she has this... like red peppers and uh... yeah 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 her sure. enemy is tom brady yeah <laughs> <laughs> um your tomatoes yeah Obergine. but she has like like umbrakinesis she can like control and become shadows and oh do that sure kind of and you know the shadow realm oh i was either say umbrakinesis is that when you're able to make really shoddy uh picture frames from green earth oh yeah in 2006 oh, yeah. nice <laughs> yeah canada <laughs> yeah um, umbra but i don't remember if that was part of her charlton thing or not that's i i think it I'm going to say, I'm going to speak out of turn here. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, in Charlton, she didn't have powers. But she had a kind of like, she was just like a crime fighter. Am I am I wrong? Am I crazy? Um. Okay, yeah. uh, you're half right. Well, well, like well, you're, 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 uh, you're like, uh, on the DC stuff, you're actually most mostly on the money there with Land and Nightshade stuff and her being able to control shadows and everything. Uh, the, she didn't have that uh, uh, backstory in Charlton, but she still did have shadow powers. Right. Not to the extent of uh, the DC version, but she was able to like blend into shadow and like make herself like a like a living silhouette and stuff. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I mentioned it already. I like her in Shadow Pack. Shadow Pack comes out of Day of Vengeance, like one of my favorite uh, kind of DC yeah. events. Um, right and that's where a bunch of like you know c-list magical characters have to come together to fight the specter and so it's mm -hmm. her and detective chimp and nightmaster and ragman and black wow. alice and all this kind of stuff and then they had right. a series after that called shadow pact and i liked that one um you know she had some suicide squad stuff I actually really love the Suicide Squad stuff. Uh, that's where they first go into like the, the, the her backstory with the land of the Nightshades, and they actually explain mm -hmm. that like they actually show that Deadshot killed her brother, and like uh, yeah. and like she has this whole romance with Rick Flag, and uh, and she like uh, she's she's like one of the actually most important members of the original run. She survives till the very end, along with Captain Boomerang and all of them, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, and. <sighs> Here, here's what I'll say. Uh, I, Nightshade has made like a handful of cameo appearances or like small appearances in the past several years. Yeah. You know, Blue Beetle's getting a movie. Peacemaker got his own TV show, and we got Judo Master in there. If there was right. and and James Gunn, who clearly loves these kind of like weirder characters. Yeah. You know, they announced creature commandos and a swamp thing thing. Like, if there's ever been a time where yeah. Nightshade might have a place again, it's it's probably now and in the coming years. Yeah. Whether that's in comics or showing up in a cartoon or being part of a movie or, or whatever, it's probably never been better for her than now. I don't know that that means it's going to happen. Right. I, well, I'm surprised they never just t chucked her into Justice League Dark. Like that'd be a pretty solid spot for her, I think. Totally. I mean, it, yeah. It's it's funny too because like DC. I mean, th th this goes around you know all the time anyway. But there's so many other like <laughs> shadow characters too, and we don't see any. Yeah. Like, we've barely gotten Obsidian back. Yeah. Jaden Obsidian, like Alan Scott's kids. They've been gone since the New 52, basically. We only just have kind of clawed them back into continuity. Has Teen Titans not done any shadow characters? 
It feels like a. Well, I mean, Raven. Sure. Raven, per- I guess. On the periphery a little bit, but there's also like Shadow Thief, the Hawkman villain. Yeah. There's, uh, uh, the, oh, well, uh, in, the, in the Superman, Batman, Public Enemies, they make a whole joke where Batman's like, oh, someone's throwing shadow stuff at me. Is it the shade? Oh, no, it's Nightshade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, there's the shade. That's, a, that's another good one. There's Shadow Lass and the Legion of Superheroes. Like, there's a, a lot. There's a, a lot. I would like to see nightshade because i think she's interesting this is part of the problem with charlton right is like the reason why you're not getting as many characters is there's a lot of like similar characters already it's, i mean it's true but i mean of all of the at least let's call let's just say shadow characters of all the ones that we just listed yeah there's not a lot of personality crossover with nightshade you know that you get yeah, a not really bit of backstory crossover in terms of like her mom being from a different place you get that with raven a little bit ish and how many of them are like former government agents right like that's a pretty interesting thing and yeah, like the fact that she knows oracle and like that's all pretty fascinating stuff i i, I think there's a place I, there's a place for her and certainly you know the thing that i liked in shadow pact is she's like i'm not a fucking sea lister i control fucking <laughs> shadows you know like through day of vengeance and shadow pact she's like i'm one of the most powerful people on the planet <laughs> she's I, like, yeah i'm surprised that like yeah that like morrison or something hasn't come in and been like there's the shadow force and like <laughs> right yeah yeah, yeah. all like, these characters you, to, that yeah i mean i if I think I think there is like an element to connecting different types of shadow characters. That feels like a some thing. of it has been done in some ways, but um, yeah, I'd be I'd be into it. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go to the next question from Batman Killer seventy seven twenty five. Yep, That's Batman seven hundred twenty fifth Batman Killer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Batman Killer seven seven two five. <laughs> like you could <laughs> who asks <laughs> what is your ideal question series pitch who would you choose as the writer artist and what other characters would you like to see with vic oh and remember jaffe decided not to be here so we can answer this question in a way that will make him most angry <laughs> that's true yeah <laughs> And we could Absolutely. shit on pre-existing things. I would things. definitely do the new 52 question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Fuck. <laughs> so, I, would like to, I would like to bring it back just to explain what the fuck his deal was. Like, what the sure. fuck? Yeah, do it. Uh, fight Vic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean look, let's see. Ideal question pitch. To me... I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm gonna do a slightly hot take here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna also gonna lean into the joke I, I made. Okay. I think I don't a hundred percent hate the idea of the question being adjacent to the supernatural. I don't think that means I want him to be supernatural. Okay. But I right. like the idea of whatever web of things he's unraveling you know especially if we take that influence from the cartoon the sort of conspiracy theorist the guy that sees patterns in everything to see mm -hmm. the like him try to unravel a mystery that starts as like regular detective and veers into the supernatural like i'm thinking of the tone of you remember that gotham by midnight series yeah the tone of that where it was like the specter and that but they were just doing like stuff in gotham yeah i love that like the the tone the thing of that but the you know the question is investigating those things. and my my basis for this is yeah that the question is dope that the the faceless mask thing is kind of scary it already makes him feel more at home with kind of the dark corner of characters sure. and also there's a different version of this where Renee's question has a weird sort of like investigate the multiverse kind of through line. Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah. So yeah, that was her whole uh, plot line. Yeah. So I'd put Vic like, you know, you start investigating a thing, but it turns out it's ghosts. Oh, how do you apply all Spooky. of your training, all of that, like your meditation, your martial arts, like things that are spiritual adjacent. How do you apply those to ghost crime? I like that. You know? Ghost crime. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. What 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 about uh, what about you, David? 
Um, I kind of just like uh, thought about this, and I'm kind of like in a particular mood because of what I've been reading lately. But I think I'd really love a mini series by Matt Wagner with either him or Dan Scotty on art. And I'm really, I'd be really interested in Matt Wagner's take because he said that he prefers to do his uh, 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 vigilante characters in the period which with, within they were created. So he likes right. doing Batman in the 30s or the shadow in the 30s or whatever. So he would do um, the question in the 60s. And I would really like some crisp art of just like him trying to figure out how to do this news reporter straight place Vic stage and try to throw in some like alternate takes on like, you know, because he tries to modernize the personalities of the characters he tackles too. So it'd be really interesting to see like a back in the prime sixties Vic stage with like a whole new spin, you know? Yeah. And like lean, like, you, like lean into the old, like Ditko objectivist thing and everything. Like that. Um, that maybe I don't, I'm, I'm curious what Wagner would do in that circumstance, because obviously the objectivism part of it was super big, but it was also uh, the other hand of it was also a lot of big stage going on uh, TV and saying like, Oh, these racketeers need to be brought down just like every other character at the time. So like, right. it'd be really cool to see like, um, uh, the, the, how the politics and how the, the, the modernization would go into something that's very like uh like the, like period pc right totally do you have a pitch for a question thing oh um i mean i really like your approach i loved with uh, like i'm thinking of something of like what you were pitching but like remember that dead man series we read oh you the one with the like the house yeah and the, like in the swamp in the bayou yeah and, yeah, yeah something yeah. like that vibe yeah. um i think would be really nice that's sort of a combination of like that and then the questions uh, I uh issue that we read um where he like he's talking to like a therapist or something and is that like when he forgotten who he was oh the the question was it the question with the jungle i don't remember jungle? that that's where he's in the jungle yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. something like that. oh okay i don't think he has i don't think he has amnesia but he definitely is in the jungle and he gets yeah there. yeah yeah something kind of like that vibe um maybe like mark wade like I mean, can't go do do something like what they did with like uh uh like his brave and the bold stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, tight. Yeah, nice. I like that. Or like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> no, own it. Or like, like whatever. Like one of us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, oh, hopefully you like any of those, Jaffe. Hopefully you like them. I hope he does. Do you know what? <laughs> you know, be on the show next time, Jaffe. This is on you. Yeah. The conversation is <laughs> happening with or without you. It's it's, <laughs> it's turning to chaos. <laughs> but what's great is that he very specifically agrees with everything we said and promotes it. So Yeah, he did give me carte yeah. blanche to say what he would say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm glad that we're we're doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question comes from oh, two questions from James Rodriguez, who asks. It, it must be Rodriguez. We have this, we have this conversation, and you were been corrected too. Not on this one. Yes, you're we, pronouncing it like WKRP in Cincinnati, like Chai Chai Rodriguez. First of all. It, it, you, yeah, you've been corrected with Rodriguez before. It's definitely Rodriguez, right? Not necessarily. I'm gonna double down. <laughs> you? <laughs> Anyways, Alan Moore originally planned for Watchmen to utilize Charlton comic characters instead of his original creations. If this is if this original idea went ahead, do you think it would have been an out of continuity tale or had been some kind of effect on the DCU? I can't imagine it would have had an effect on the DCU, but do you think it would have been out of continuity or would it have been like a very depressing, like, like from fa farewell to like the Charlton universe? But don't forget there's a rape. In yeah. There. <laughs> um, uh, Thanks. Moore. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, you will know, since more like probably gets a headache and wants to throw up any anytime anyone asks him about continuity i think uh he would probably try to make it like its own thing but like maybe maybe it would be like a what like uh whatever happened to the man of tomorrow yeah. like it like uh it's like a oh this is an explanation for what happened to these specific set of characters moving on <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah yeah uh but you know it, it would be interesting i think uh i mean we we've kind of seen we i mean watchmen itself has kind of shown all these characters kind of 
have to respond to uh you know that work a bit like the question wanting to be like rorschach and then getting his ass kicked for it or you know uh captain adam one of his versions literally being dr manhattan down to like you know the symbol on his head or whatever you know it's like all these characters are kind of impacted by watchmen anyhow you know yeah it's true i I mean we we talked about pax americana already but even back in final crisis we saw like the the Morrison version of Earth Four, where it's Charlton by way of Watchmen. So funny, you know right? yeah. that mm-hmm. that Alan Adam, you know, being so detached from humanity and things like that. You know, in Pax Americana, he does the thing where he like rips the dog apart to see what it's like inside, and he can't put it back together. You know, um, <laughs> there's like all of, all of that kind of shit. You know, D- definitely. I I mean. I'll, I'd be curious about your opinion here, but I feel like Peacemaker got, like, even in DC, got like doubled down on being like a psychotic nationalist. Oh, for sure. After Watchmen, like more than he, you know, Peacemaker as a concept is like the man who like killed yes. to keep the peace, but like the Charlton Peacemaker feels less psychotic than the sure. DC I mean, that Peacemaker. Would make sense. Right? Yeah. And then, you know, the Earth 4 one is like fully like the comedian just completely amoral you know doing whatever he deems to be just or sure. you know in pursuit of peace or whatever which is kind of crazy and, and the 80s version is like the final boss of evil captain america types he's just flat out like insane <laughs> yeah yeah totally i mean um yeah I, I i think i think david's probably right i i doubt this would have had an effect on the dcu um i I suspect it wouldn't have been literally uh, like the end of the Charlton continuity. Yeah. But it'd be one of those things where it's like mostly standalone, but it's very clearly meant to be like a kind of epilogue to those characters. Like I, I bet if he was using the Charlton characters, it would feel like that, whether he intended it or not. Sure. Yeah. Like a swan song of sorts. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, the second part of his question is, What's the deal with about Judo Master? Like, what's oh. his story and lore? That's probably oh from god, this is one of my, my this is my blind name. spot. Huh. Well, that's on you. Yeah, I fucked that up. Hmm. This is that's my blind spot. Weird. I I've got nothing. Hmm. Uh, okay, the deal with Judo Master. There's a few Judo Masters. First of all, quite a few. Um. The original one has such a dumb fucking name. Give me a second. I couldn't remember it. So I, uh, the original, uh, oh yeah, his name was Hadley Rip Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, yeah. And he Rip was, torn. Uh, he like basically just trains in judo. Like, I think it's, it has something to do with the war, and he gets like lost in the Pacific or something. He like ends up on a yeah, Japanese never... island or something. You mean like the original has always been lame to me? Like half his, half his, half the original Junior Masters comics are like crotty instructional comics. Like, oh, here's how you do this move and this move. And it's like, Which oh my I, god, I kind of love that too. I learned judo from a comic book. <laughs> <It's so funny. laughs> judo master taught me. Um, there was a judo master after him. Like again, like no powers or anything. His son. Wait, t- but the guy right after him, did he have like the moves like Jagger? No, but his son Thomas Jagger you know, <laughs> got the moves from his daddy. He had the moves like Jagger. Thank you. Yeah, that was a really good joke. Nice. Thank you. Um, <laughs> the the most current DC judo master is a woman named Sonia Sato, who um, obviously a martial arts expert. But she is a meta human. She has a can't remember what they call it, but her meta power is basically if people try to attack her directly, they can't. She has some sort of like I I can't remember if it's like a literal force field or if it's like their brains can't do it. Like if someone tries to punch her, they can't. (laughs) (laughs) And that's like her meta power. Um, And Sonia Sato is the most recent judo master and you know, she was on the Birds of Prey and uh, and stuff like that. We saw a version mm-hmm. of Judo Master in the Peacemaker TV show. Love that. But that none of funny. the characters have like super rich like backstories. I, I mean, not you know, I mean, not in a mm-hmm. way. I, I well, well, there, there's some rich backstories. Uh, Bane breaks Judo Master's back at one point. It's really his fucking move, isn't it? Yeah. 
<laughs> that's a rich backstory, I think. That's the that's, uh, a, that's a backstory, yeah. Oh god damn it. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> god. Yeah, he's replacing us. He's hurting his place. Yeah, yeah. Him and Jaffe can do this from now on. We'll pass it on like a that Bane, like, see that me, see being, me next week, Alex. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that being Bane's move is a robot chicken bit. Oh, really? Where he just keeps coming up behind Batman, not saying anything, just picking up, stabbing his back. <laughs> he goes, do, 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 that's Bane. That's very funny. <laughs> Rule of three, asshole, not four. Yeah. Oh, you just walk up, you don't say anything. Ah. Oh. Like I had so my good pasta, my spy. <laughs> that's very funny. Uh, that's great. Uh, all right. Well, let's move on. And we're going to leave Twitter and head it over to Instagram. Now we're going to Instagram. Take some questions and answer them. First question comes from Dan Hummer, 97, yeah. who asks, does Ted Kord's Blue Beetle work without Booster Gold? Do you think Dan Garrett should get more love? So some Blue, some blue Beetle questions. I mean, you, you, you mentioned yeah. it. Uh, as well that like when DC takes takes over and the characters yeah. get folded in Ted relatively quickly ends up paired off with Booster Gold like one of the the, the first new characters introduced to DC after um, after crisis yeah what's your opinion on Ted Cord like minus Booster because it's it seems so hard to even conceive of that now well, which is funny because uh, both had like 20 plus issue series in the 80s where they weren't really friends at all. Totally. Um, and yeah, fun side note, uh, uh, Dick Giordano also assisted in the creation of Booster Gold, which is an interesting little thing. But, oh, that is uh, kind of interesting, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, no, uh, Ted Cord, I think he has moments where he definitely works without Booster Gold. Like I love them together, but I, I like I think both of them definitely work you know as independent characters too i mean it's kind of like a power man and iron fist you know like they're great characters and they're also great together it's like, yeah you know. i agree I, I mean you know a, a solo ted cord story even in more modern days takes on a different flavor without booster there like booster mm -hmm. brings out the kind of like silly or whatever and then like it feels like ted's always like brought back down to earth when it's just him adventuring on his own Oh yeah, he's always confronted by like the realities of like his business or his whatever, you know, well, or just like the the methods in which he chooses to do his crime fighting. That's always like interesting stuff too. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, Ted. I mean, obviously, superheroes in general tend to be non lethal, but Ted takes it like another step further. Like Batman is like, technically, I didn't kill you, you know, but it'll, like Batman will do. I pushed him off a building. The ground killed him. <laughs> Batman is like a bunch of shit like that. But Ted is like, welcome back, Michael Keaton. Yeah. yeah. But Ted just uses like, like a, he has like a, like an air gun. Sure. You know, like it's even yeah. gentler. Like yes. it's, it's even more non violent you know i, I non-violence the wrong word because he still like does karate and shit you know what i mean but i like, mean like he he designs all his ships so they don't have rough edges <laughs> yeah i mean yeah, yeah. yeah it's true yeah he's sort of like yeah there's something interesting about that i i think uh i i like him on his own but obviously that booster relationship really like took people really like have mm -hmm. hooks in that and i it is kind of hard to extricate, but I do think it's helped since Jaime Reyes came around. I think it's it's helped because then yeah. when you have oh, yeah. Ted oh, yeah. in as a mentor, I mean, obviously this is, I've been talking post-Flashpoint because he was dead before that, but um, <laughs> having him as kind of like a mentor, even a slightly unserious mentor, so you kind of get the best of both. You get the thing people like about yeah. his relationship with Booster, but he's also you know he's a mentor he's got it's him with the tech he's trying to teach this kid how to be a superhero like that shit i like it's the thing that you and i've talked about which is that like there's all there's an opportunity for uh jaime to be almost like a spider-man sort of version in totally dc which i love oh, yeah totally. um yeah you, especially that first book with jaime that that was definitely very spider-man flavor it totally. really worked out his flavor the second half of this question is about dan garrett though uh it's uh uh, does Dan Garrett deserve more uh, love? Dan Garrett is the first Blue Beetle. David, what are your feelings about Dan Garrett? 
Oh, uh, this is interesting. Uh, I've uh, well, there's technically two Dan Garretts. There's Dan Garrett <laughs> with one T at there's there's Dan <laughs> Garrett with one T at the end, who was uh, published by Fox Comics, and uh, then there's the Charlton Comics one who had two T's. Um, <laughs> Now, one is just an archaeologist who, you know, I think that the one, the DC Comics is kind of tame one. He discovers uh, the scarab. He's an archaeologist, discovers the scarab and the rock and stuff. The Fox Comics is, is really interesting because he's a guy, he's like a cop who goes to a pharmacist, just a regular pharmacist, and like pumps himself full of drug and then puts on chain mail and then like goes out to criminals and be like, shoot me, shoot me in the chest. I can take it. <laughs> and like, Man, they're two very different cops. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no. Dan Garrett's an interesting guy. I would actually kind of like. I think a really cool story was when um, Booster Gold teamed up with all the Blue, the Blue Beetles across time in order yeah. to save Ted Cord. He got a little bit of Dan Garrett uh, shine there. And that's cool. Yeah, what, what's interesting is like the the over the time rat kind of things. But like Dan Garrett did have the scarab, and it did give him some powers, strength, and you know durability and shit like that. But he still looked like a like a golden age, like masked adventurer. Sure, you know his mm -hmm. his costume is almost like the uh, like the Phantom a little bit. But he <laughs> really, like a, oh, very much the Phantom. I always mistake the two all the time. But um, but what's interesting is that Ted never got the powers. So like, oh. Ted is Blue Beetle on Sans his powers. on his own, and it was that was always the case. Oh, and then. Yeah. There's the retcon that like even Dan didn't get all of the Scarab's powers. That's what Jaime has. That's why Jaime has this oh. full like alien like carapace kind of armor all over him. Y oh, wow. Yeah, the retcon was that the Scarab was like a Dan got like a damaged version of the Scarab. So like the powers would be all fluctuate. Would actually which actually kind of works out with the Golden Age uh, issues where like from issue to issue the writers would never be able to figure out what his actual fucking powers were. So sometimes you'd have heat vision, and sometimes you'd be able to grow and shrink, and sometimes yeah. he'd be able to crawl walls <laughs> but uh and, and the, the the jaime reyes series retconned all that the, oh yeah no it was being it was damaged <laughs> yeah yeah i like the idea that like the suit could maybe grow or shrink but he couldn't you just hear his like bones because <laughs> the suit shrinks oh, oh, God. oh no he's like ah i can't <laughs> that's very funny uh all right let's go to the next question from sure. cursed blob who asks who should get the Peacemaker treatment next? Going from more or less obscure character to a new modern mainstream character. Who would be more suited for a reboot in live action? All right. Who this this is the the question. Yeah. Well, maybe not the question. It's a question. Hey, um, speaking of, that's probably who it is. Which Charlton character deserves it? Yeah. I think it's the question. That's the natural one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a too much of a basic bitch for you, David. <laughs> I, I was, no, 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 I, was I agree wrong. with you. I agree with you. Yeah, I was wrong to say you were one of us before. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm. I'm too mainstream. I think the question should get its own you're, TV series. You're the pumpkin spice latte of comic <laughs> of, of C tier I'm comic so providers. Well, yeah, I, I think it's like. <laughs> I mean, it's been happening over the last few years. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you're wrong to say the question, but I will say that like the parameters of what's being asked of us here is like the question's already more popular than that. He just doesn't have a live action show. True. Yeah. He's got a huge call following, you know, like yeah, call following. That's the I thing. know, but it's also like, like, you know, Martian Manhunter doesn't have a fucking show, but he's also like a, a big popular character. Yeah, like, I would argue the question is probably as popular as Martian. Manhunter. Come on. That's preposterous. Uh, I don't, well, I don't yeah, no, I, I, I dial that back a little bit, but yeah, uh, thank, I, yeah, I, that's I insane. Think, I don't think that's preposterous. Get, who was in the Justice League movie? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> I don't know about whether Martian Manhunter was in it, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Jaffe's with me. Uh, uh, well, my, I guess, um. It's a, it's a tricky one because like Peacemaker's really specific vision. Like when I heard they were making a Peacemaker show, I did not envision what like came out. I did not know sure, they were like, sure. going to do would, that yeah. with, with like with, with, they're using Vigilante. Like you know, it, like I, that would be my my answer if like they didn't already throw Vigilante into it. That's a cool character. That has I mean, that would just issues. be a good spinoff. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, and yeah, no, we already see him. It'd be it, um, uh, I don't know. It, it, 
like honestly, my I'm just really curious what weird obscure characters show up in season two of Peacemaker. That's where I'm at. I I wonder, you know, Peacemaker obviously, you know, Judo Master was in there. I mm-hmm. I wonder if season two of Peacemaker will have another like Charlton kind of character I, a- around. You know, like I would love that. I mean, truly. If Nightshade was going to show up anywhere, it would show up in a in a gun like Peacemaker, like that kind of if, sort of thing. If if James Gunn was going to do the question, I would want him to show up in Peacemaker with like the mullet that he had in the eighties. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> oh man. yeah, Pe- like peach the fashion. sleeveless shirt. Yeah. Um, oh, God, what character deserves the Peacemaker treatment? E man. <laughs> no, I don't think about, uh, uh, DC owns E Man. Yeah. What about uh, uh, Son of Vulcan? Sure. <laughs> oh, DC owns Son of Vulcan. They could do stuff with him. Yeah. What, the, the, we we talked about Son of Vulcan before. The guy who who you know kind of flips off the gods. They go, "What the fuck did you say about us?" Yeah. <laughs> the gods kick the shit out of him. I love that. Um, and he shows up in that uh, one George Perez Wonder Woman event just to get killed. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe Son of Vulcan. That's my answer. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Throw him in. Yeah. I like that. Or Nature Boy. <laughs> there was a boy. <laughs> Very strange, enchanted boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question from Ben Fosh Stewart. Oh, lock the door if you're coming in. That's right. Uh, who asks, which Charlton character do you think DC has handled the best? Which have they done the worst with? Mm. So I mean, the best is it? Is it Blue Beetle? It's got to be Blue Beetle. Beetle or Question, right? It's one of those two. Yeah, Question's up there too. But Blue Beetle's definitely like you know he's he's got a movie coming out. He's had a pretty successful legacy. I mean, yeah. hell, uh, Jaime Reyes was like the co-star of Raven the Bold, basically. Yeah, yeah. One I, of the that, main that players. Would be at my least. guess. The worst though. For worst. Um. Well, that's tough because a lot of them have been done dirty. I don't know. I mean, I I'll 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 just say it. It's Captain Adam. I was just gonna say it's probably yeah, Captain Adam, and not, yeah, and not necessarily fuck. that he hasn't had appearances or series Stop or well, that's the opportunities, but like a character that you know that big, that powerful, a character that should be more present, a character with an interesting hook, like the military, like. His like divided loyalties. Yeah. Like, that's an interesting thing, and and like, what have they done with them? That's you the know? thing. Like, I mean, we Cap- haven't seen Cap- Captain yeah. Adam is like nothing. You know, I, uh, it's that has to be the biggest fumble bag from Charles. Yeah, because it's one thing. It's like Thunder Bunny, which you just don't see, sure. but like or E Man, but like they actually tried to do something with Captain Adam and totally biffed it. Yeah. You know, and it's a character people like, and they can't even make it happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I, it, it, you... I agree. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's leave Instagram and head on over to the Doc Scored. Oh shit! Yep. Uh, fuck. Did uh, do it. Doc Scored. We're there. Hang on. Hang on. I'm obviously ready. Why would for I? This. Oh, okay. Well, then go. I'm obviously ready. Okay. Uh, when you're ready, you just do it. Uh... <laughs> Bitch better have my dark score. Oh, somebody watched the uh, the uh, football. Yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah, bitch better have my dark score. Yeah, that's yep. that's all I got. That's good. No, nice. no, no. Docs better have my score. I was sweaty. Yeah, was yeah, 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 yeah. That's sure. What uh, all right. First question from the Doc Squared comes from JK. Uh, we hear a lot about Charlton heroes, but what about Charlton villains? Ooh. Great question. Have Ooh. there been any that have made a big impression or are there any you would like to see p- of a bigger player in the universe? Uh, I um, will say it was really cool to see. Uh, this actually brings up a, have you, either of you seen the showcase blue beetle short that came out with like the Constantine <laughs> yeah. DVD. Yeah. I really yeah. like that. So, so good. yeah, that was great. And probably my favorite Charlton thing to come out in years. That was really excellent. Love the animation. Love everything about it. Uh, Tom Kenny voices Captain Adam villain, Dr. Spectro in that. And I was right. like, hell yeah. Bring more of that character back. That's a cool one. Totally. He's basically like the rainbow Raider before uh, the Rainbow Raider was invented. Yeah, I um, well, 
I mean, certainly in terms of making multiple appearances, I think I think the Mad Men, the Blue Beetle villains, yeah, they they have made several appearances in DC since you just, know just drinking whiskey and slapping the secretaries in the ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, yeah, you sure. Know, no, everyone else's cigarettes cause cancer. Yeah, yours are toasted. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but like they <laughs> lots of appearances, they might be like the most prolific Charlton oh. villains to have made it. Over. Wow, definitely the most prolific Blue Beetle ones, at the very least. Like uh, they even showed up in the Brave and the Bold for an episode. Like the, here's the bit. Like I, I'm not as familiar with like the old Charlton Captain Adam. I know obviously a lot was changed about him in you know when he became part of DC. Is there any versions of any of those characters, like Doctor, like Megala, or like General Eiling, or like is anything, any like versions or analogs of those characters from Charlton, or is that all just they just started over? Uh, well, it's interesting. Uh, General Eiling is actually a play on words because a, a background character who's only mentioned once in the very first issue of Captain Adam's first appearance is named General Eining. He oh, is okay. named once and never again. And uh, the writers decide, oh, we'll just uh, name him Eiling and make him like the biggest piece of shit and one of my favorite villains. Uh, oh, interesting. And, That's kind of fun. Yeah, no, you know, he's, he's pretty great. Uh, um, as far as other villains being like taken and used um, in the main DC universe, not really, because actually what, what uh, the problem that goes with the Charlton heroes, like you mentioned earlier, a lot of the character the existing DC characters have like the same abilities or whatever that goes double for the villains because you have a lot of villains who have ice powers or electric powers or are really strong and stuff like, um, uh, Pax Americana uses the, like the captain Adam villain iron arms for like a panel or two, right. <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of, a lot of these characters are cool, but like they, they're, they're, they're kind of getting, getting lost in the sea of DC. This yeah. one, there's one that didn't start as a villain, but became one, which was judo masters, like the original judo masters sidekick tiger, mm -hmm. not like a tiger, a sidekick named tiger. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, becomes a, a villain uh, and kills hmm. Judo Master, I think. And that is referenced later, like in the Sonia Sato stuff. Oh. Hmm. But that might huh. be all in DC, like, but still, you know, that is, that's, um, I think that that counts. But yeah, I mean, in general, you know, the, you know, for the question, he was just like taken down like random crooks and shit like that he had one kind of like costume bad guy called the banshee that was basically oh like... i love the banshee you reminded me of the banshee there is this great uh black and white issue where the banshee comes back he's the only recurring question villain in his history and the question immediately beats him again it's great yeah but he's just like he's kind of just like a like a, a less famous kite man basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, actually a cooler costume in my opinion it, steve dicko it is a cooler costume <laughs> although yeah. I, I got to give credit to Tom King and then subsequently the Harley Quinn show because they've really made me like Kite Man. It's true. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Oh, a uh, small question connection. Uh, Jeffrey Combs voiced Kite Man in The Brave and the Bold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love that. So good. Uh, yeah. There you go. All right. Next question from Lilith who asks, was Pe Peacemaker's father around in the original Tar Charlton books? The plot of I am haunted by the ghost of my Nazi father seems distinctly 80s. <laughs> and ED, this person is absolutely correct. It was 100% designed for the 80s. That's so funny. Is there is there anything about his like family like, or his, like being trained by his dad or like is there is there any nugget of the thing that is then 80sified that then, you know, we explore in a different way in the show or, or things like that. Is any of that from the original Charlton Peacemaker? Um, the things that I detected most from the original Charlton Peacemaker were the various helmets he had. The, I was actually really surprised by the fact that they actually, because in the, the big deal in the comics, the Charlton comics at least, was uh, that Peacemaker's helmet had all sorts of abilities. It had a laser, it had like um, like uh, the, the sound affecting abilities, it, it that, could right? uh, cause stealth and all that. Like, um, And I, it was really cool how... Um, Gun decided to make it a bunch of helmets and had give them like 
various different design intricacies. So um, and, and the really fun thing is that the one that uh, in the show is supposed to give uh, the wearer herpes was an actual helmet that Pat Boyette designed in the original show, in the original comic. Jesus. What? Well, no, it doesn't give the user herpes in the original comic, but it has the same design. Like, it's the same oh, design as, okay, like, a... Okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's a James Gunn... And that's a James Gunn thing. Like, come on. I was picturing, <laughs> like, you go, you pick up your Peacemaker comic, it's 1967, yeah, yeah. it's like, this helmet gives him herpes. Oh. Why would he make this? Yeah. <laughs> You know what? That version of Peacemaker, he actually might have made a helmet that gives him herpes. I don't know. That guy was kind of weird, too. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> the look on both of our faces when we thought that that was canonical. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. All right. Next question from Butt Butt Fart Butt, who asks, do you think the post-crisis changes made to Captain Adam were an improvement to the character or would DC have been better off sticking with Alan Adam? So a little Ooh. bit of context here in DC, you have uh, Nathaniel Adams. He's like a, a air force, you know, guy. Uh, and he does this experiment. Pilot. They have like, they, he, yeah. Pilot. <laughs> he, does, he signs up for this experiment. <laughs> that <Force>. he, <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I can't let that slide. Listen, I'm, I, I'm in the military. Yeah, he's an airplane driver. I did, I did uh, not complete basic training, <laughs> but I did shoot that thing down over Alaska. But I did shoot that down. Yeah. Um. Uh. But he signs up for this experiment that uses this like alien metal, and and uh, there's a nuclear explosion. He's like propelled forward in time, and he becomes living energy encased in a containment suit. That is DC's Captain Adam in a oh, very, very okay. quick nutshell. Charlton's mm -hmm. Captain yep. Adam, David. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, so Alan Adam was a devoted member of the Air Force who accidentally got locked in a rocket that just shot up into space without anybody else in it and it just kind of exploded. And then he got and a, and a thing that's it's kind of similar to uh, Alan Moore's like, uh, Dr. Manhattan Watchmen issue. He just kind of randomly appears and reappears throughout that issue. Right. Um, uh, and then he finally shows up in the, like, the, the fucking Oval Office or something. He's like, oh, I'm back, and I can serve my country, and I can be Captain Adam, and uh, yada, yada, things go from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is your opinion? Which one do you like better? Do you like the, whoopsie, got locked in a rocket, or do you like the <laughs> <laughs> DC? Well, uh, I I like the if we're talking specifically like that version, yeah, I like the '80s uh, take where he um, is black, like because like uh, before the experiment even takes place, like uh, General Eiling frames him for killing one of his uh, uh, squad mates while yeah. in Vietnam, That's and cool. he's like, well, you have two choices: you can rot in prison forever, or you can uh, maybe survive this experiment where we nuke you, <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> And then yeah. you might be able to see your family again. And then there's the whole drama that goes when he travels 20 years in time as all his kids are grown old and they hate him. And then, you know, there's that whole uh, drama that goes with that. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the original was really cool, too, in terms of, like, how it was, like, Charlton's, like, biggest selling book at the time to the point where Captain Adam took it over because it was originally an anthology series, but they made it a Captain Adam series. But, yeah, I like the 80s version. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just think it's a it's a better more cohesive kind of idea it's you know it's like anything that started in the 60s right you know like there's the, the kernel mm -hmm. of something interesting in there but it's also wrapped up in like the way that comics were written then and yeah, so it's hard absolutely. to extricate those things a little bit sometimes oh totally all right let's go to the next question from only just dan again who asks huge fan of charlton posting hey you hey. got a fan hey which blue beetle costume is your favorite Ooh. does dan garrett have the best fin head in comics Ooh, good questions all around uh i will say my favorite has to be ted cords it's been around since the 60s with a very few changes in between it's a really great take steve dicko just absolutely 10 out of 10 with great designs all around i just i love that one 
Did I don't know you guys? Did Ted Cord get like a big ass armored like version in like Extreme Justice or the conglomerate? conglomerate Surprisingly, or like no. That? Um, the worst thing that happened to Ted Cord was uh, the artist decided to draw him exactly like Todd McFarlane's Spider Man. So you have him doing a lot of poses where he's leaping around and swinging oh, around. Right. Like the, yeah. Um, and no, not really that many changes to his costume still. That that Ted Cord costume is pretty pretty hard to beat. But I I gotta say mm-hmm. I love I love the Dan Garrett costume, like especially in the context of him being like a golden age adventurer. You know, like sure, yeah. DC, you know, now we have this kind of in universe and sort of meta narrative about like the first generation of superheroes. And when you do that, you know, even when you're retconning characters into that you're always designing them to look like they were drawn in sure, the 40s yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. i do mm-hmm, love mm-hmm. the look of dan garrett's costume it's like a blue like almost kind of chainmail thing and he, he does kind of look like the phantom it's got the fin on the head and he's got like red pants or some shit like that or like a red belt at least yeah. um, it's I, I think it looks good is he the best fin head in comics I think Omac would like a word. <laughs> oh yeah, Omac, Omac or the OG Yondu. I got to give it to one of those. Two. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Yondu from the original Guardians. Yeah, yeah, yeah and um, outside of uh, comics, you'd have to talk to Poe. Uh, he's a real fin head. Yeah, I was gonna say he gets oh, good yeah. fin head. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the next question. The last question. Did you have another one? I had a no. It was too disgusting to say with a guest. <laughs> <laughs> David doesn't matter. It's fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> but just know that I was gonna riff on BB-8. Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Like I can see where that's going. Belt? Oh God, I didn't. Wasn't even going that way. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, let's do this. <laughs> Whether we can get a good five minutes on Star Wars dirty jokes. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, all right. Last question comes from Mullet Overlord. BBA got a good five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what is the opposite of grandfathering into something, and should it apply to Booster Gold and the Charlton action heroes since he all- spends almost all his time with Blue Beetle and Captain Adam? Shout out to their time together on Extreme Justice, which sure is a comic that exists. So the question is, <laughs> should we use, you know, Booster's time travel ability and the fact that those are the characters yeah. that he is, he's associated with a lot to sort of like, I mean, the word is retcon, but to sort of like make him an honorary Charlton character. Yeah, the opposite of grandfathering. Is it stepsister? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think a much simpler version of this question is is Booster Golden honorary Charlton character? Which my yeah, answer that's is. That's what yes, they do with but... Charlton comics. They stepsister them. They bring Stop. him into the it's Hold not on. Gonna work. No, it's because they bring him into the family and then somebody fucks them. <laughs> Jesus. <That's what> <laughs> I was gonna say, is that where he gets like stuck part way in the time stream? <laughs> Might have happened before. <laughs> um, is so do does Booster count as kind of like an honorary Charlton character? Oh, interesting. I mean, the and vibes would it, would are there. Interesting. I mean, I think part of what's missing from this is that the Charlton characters. Going back to the like an earlier question that we were talking yeah. about, outside of like a couple of instances, the Charlton characters don't really team up with themselves sure so it's hard like what does it mean to be an honorary charlton character beyond what he already is which well, is, is like there some... a friend of captain adam and blue Beetle. is there something that's like inherent to the charlton characters that you could be like that's got a vibe of charlton right i i think i can answer this a little bit because i've thought uh, about this before um and yeah i think blue beetle is an honorary charlton character because uh, one, his assistant, like he was, his creation was due kind of in part to Dick Giordano, like talking to Jan Jur- Jurgens over the concept and idea. And two, a big factor. I mean, sometimes he does, but most of the time he doesn't have a cape, which is a big defining factor of a yeah. an action hero. Um, oh. And and also, like I don't know, just his general demeanor and like the the whole philosophy of the character really speaks to something that's like, oh, this is more creator driven than it is more like to the like it owes it doesn't really owe itself to the larger universe so much as it, as it does to the whims of what the creator wants for 
the specific vision. Right. Um, like Dan Jurgens, when he made Bo- Booster Gold, he was like, oh yeah, I want to make a phony who has a heart of gold, you know? And like, there's something like, a, there's something layered to that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I like that answer. Yeah, I absolutely. do want to just take a moment here and say that I'm a fucking idiot for not mentioning Punch and Julie when we were talking about Charlton villains. Oh, oh yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. They were great in the Suicide Squad, especially yeah, because we talked about Punch and Julie like last week or two we? weeks ago or some shit like that. Like, oh, they've come up recently, and I'm an idiot for that. But um. Yeah, the, the, they're just... the they're the biggest Captain Adam villains to escape being Captain Adam villains because they've never fought Captain Adam in DC. Like I don't think ever. Yeah, and I think you know, I, I think that's probably smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably for the best. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean that's partly what I find so funny about the Watchmen versions of them that were created in Doomsday Clock, which is Mime and Marionette. Sure. The, the, the implication that mime and marion or oh or oh, hang on one thought at a time the <laughs> implication that mime and marion that were then like dr manhattan villains is very funny to that me. is very funny but also oh, yeah. then this was the thought that almost interrupted me there were mime and marionette part of that before watchman book or were they no i don't think they were Doomsday because Clock? I think Jeff Johns mentioned in like an interview that he made them for Doomsday Clock and based them off Punch and Julie. And oh, stuff. Okay. I mean that. Well, that what makes... was really conf... yeah, that makes yeah. What was really confusing to me was uh, at like shortly before do- like the first issue of Doomsday Clock came out, uh, an issue of Times King's Batman featured an updated version of Punch and Julie. Right. And it was like, wait, wait, who's who here? Wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not on the, the wrist for really not having that. mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that was the last question. David, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, David, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, you apparently are a great Twitter follow. So uh, why don't you let people know where they can find you online? Oh, uh, gladly. Uh, I'm available on uh, question posting at Twitter, uh, Charlton posting over on Facebook. And I also have a web comic you can find on Webtoon called Everything Will Be the Same Ever Again. And uh, it also features some uh, Charlton analogs in there. So if you're interested in our topic or discussion today, you might find some interest in that. Fuck yeah. Nice. Hell yeah. Well, we did it. We did it. And- hey, you brought the game, right? Well, yeah, but we because we have a guess. It's not the right time. Oh, I think okay, to sure. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. But, but uh, you did make it. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because you promised. Yeah. And that's why I did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's going to it's going to blow your mind. It's going to be be your age. <laughs> uh, well, we'd love to hear from, re- from you, residents. And if you want to send a question for next week's episode, the theme of which you'll find out when I want you to. Oh, yeah. Because because I'm on, on top of things <laughs> this week. You're really like, <laughs> it's not your fault. You're really busy. And yeah. so you've got nothing else. to. <laughs> uh, my brain's a little scrambly this month. Uh, yeah. You have a reason for that. Um, well, you can send those questions Fuck to you. our various social media platforms. We're Dr. DC podcast on Facebook and Instagram uh, at Dr. DC on Twitter and TikTok. Uh, r slash Dr. Underscore DC on Reddit. Uh, we've obviously got our website, drdcpodcast.com or .ca. You can email us, drdcpodcast at gmail.com. The doc phone's always open, 208-917-3238. It's 208-917-DCEU oh, if wait, you're nasty. We got a voicemail. What? Yeah. I Yeah, we got a voicemail. I'm halfway through the plugs. I know, but I feel <laughs> like it might be related to this, so I would hate for it to pass because we haven't got a... What is this? My Punch and Julie revelation? We're and, just going to double back to... <laughs> and I'm constantly complaining how people aren't doing it, so I feel like if I don't play it, yeah. then it'll be bad. All right, well, yeah, so, yeah, I guess... Let, yeah, let's do it. Let's let's see. Hey there, this is Kyle Rayner. Uh, wanted to call and ask... I. Uh, I'm going to start with some preface first. I'm really considering starting a podcast of same caliber as the Dr. DC podcast. Um, but i thinking about doing it on Marvel because I don't know of any well-received podcasts where they go over the week's comics and take questions like you guys do, but with more of a focus on that month's releases. And because that's something that I felt was missing from 
to kind of the environment of these comic book podcasts. But um, just want to know if you guys had any tips for getting started because I uh, I've got a buddy and we've got a pretty similar dynamic to you guys. I feel like we'd be a good fit for it. Um, and uh, we want to call it mon- uh, sorry, we want to call it Marvel Morning. So uh, just kind of a running name for now. Thinking about a couple of things we could do with it, but. Yeah, any uh, any advice would be appreciated. Thanks, and I love your show. First piece of advice: don't record your podcast instead of a bird sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs> he hung up and got consumed alive. <laughs> you guys don't have to worry about that other podcast anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this will be like, Marvel mourning him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. At first, I couldn't tell what the sound was, and I thought it was like locusts or crickets yeah, or some yeah. shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, the, I mean, the biggest tip is, yeah, don't record it wherever that was. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think that's, I think that's an awesome idea. Ab- absolutely, go for it. I mean, here's, here's the, here's the real uh, trick to it. You've got an idea. You've got a hook. You got a friend that wants to do it, and just, you know, the big thing is, this is rich. This is always Richard's point have a format yeah have a format and consistency yeah as long as you always show up and do the thing and have a format and somebody who cares enough to try to make it sound good then you're great yeah 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 I mean yes what what I don't know it feels like you were kind of centering yourself there a little bit Mm. somebody who's like I think devilishly handsome and cares about production something like that I think I think what you need is one of you needs to like gain too much weight (laughs) <laughs> um, wait which one you know a lot about stuff you, yeah you get too much you're fucking stolen valor you're <laughs> that's not stolen valor fat stolen valor I mean, um uh yeah we'll address this on the double i yeah, think no, you should subscribe if you, to if you know about a thing if you care about it yeah. and you have like a structure to it then yeah you're gonna do great people will find you i mean we did this podcast and somehow all of you lunatics listening found yeah. us so if you build it, they will come. Yes, and in our case, a lo- C-U-M. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Or A-L-M. <laughs> yeah, yeah, calm. Yeah. Uh, uh, but why don't you subscribe to Anyway, it? back to plugs. Patreon. Um, <laughs> we have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Dr. DC. Uh, and there's a $1, $5, $7 level. They all give you access to the Doc Squad, our awesome fan community. And at the higher levels, you get bonus episodes, theme pulls eventually, all sorts of fun stuff. There's actually... I, I have a sort of secret project uh, that's going to be just for the Golden Age patrons that I'm, I'm really excited about. Oh, that's right. You do have yeah. something coming. Yeah. So that I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, also, if you like what we talk about here, you might like what we talk about on our other podcast. Yeah. Ghost Facers, a Supernatural rewatch. Uh, we're going through every single episode of the CW Supernatural. We talk about real world monster lore, behind the scenes stuff about the show. It's a good ass time, baby. Yeah. <laughs> our... All right, David, say goodbye. All right. Bye-bye, you guys. <laughs> Thank you for doing it. Ciao, this. ciao. Adios. Superheroes. They always fight for what is right. Live with danger and adventure. They are men of might. This is a Brain Freeze podcast.